Hello everyone, my name is Simon and I would like to welcome you to today's webinar brought to you by the University of Helsinki titled Study Computer Science at the University of Helsinki in Finland. And during today's webinar, you will learn more about the University of Helsinki in general. It's the oldest and largest university in Finland and it has repeatedly been ranked among world's top universities. Of course, you'll know more about the Computer Science Master's Program, what is it all about and about the career possibilities and of course, the much needed information on how to apply. And without further ado, it is time to meet today's presenters. And first off, I would like to introduce uh, Veli Makinen. Welcome, Veli. Hi, Simon. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce this uh, computer science program to the uh, students that are planning to apply. Veli, thank you very much. And then next off uh, in the session, we have Tina Niklander. Welcome to you, Tina. Thank you, Simon. I'm a university instructor at the at the Department of Computer Science and also helping a lot the new students when once they arrive at the department. And we also have a student present and his name is Ahmed Sobi. Welcome, Ahmed. Thank you, Simon. Hello, everybody. My name is Ahmed and I have a master's degree from University of Helsinki Computer Science Department. It's my pleasure to be with you here today. Thank you very much, Ahmed, uh, for taking your time. And last but not least, it is time to meet Carolina Coco Usitalo, uh, the admissions advisor. Welcome, Carolina. Thank you, Simon. So I'm an admission advisor at the university, and I'm going to tell you a little about our admission processes. Thank you very much to all uh, four of the panelists joining today. And I'm sure that the audience that has joined today's webinar would actually prefer to hear more from you. So without further ado, it is time to give the floor to Billy. Okay, thank, thank you, Simon. So <clears throat> I'm the program director, and uh, in this presentation I will uh, introduce many many aspects of the program. But first, on this uh, first slide, you will see the beautiful Helsinki, uh, maybe in uh, January, February. Uh, so this is how it looks looks like uh, at that time of the year. So I hope you will be there next next year to observe this beautiful city. Uh, so uh, we are today introdu introducing you this uh, master's program in computer science in the Faculty of Science. Uh, we have been running this program already for several years, and we have a lot of international students in here. And uh, so <clears throat> next, uh, uh, I think I will give the word to Tina Niklander, who who will uh, explain you the content of this. Uh, uh, this presentation. So as you notice, we are covering a lot of topics. Ahmed will first explain a bit about the Helsinki and Finland area, and then I'll go through the university structure, etc. And then over the program issues, Veli and I will be covering parts of those, and then Carolina will explain later on the application process, and Ahmed will at some point go also through the career issues. So there's plenty of things coming on. And I think it's going to be Ahmed's turn next to con start the content. Thank you, Tina. Who is going to pass? Do I have to pass the control? Okay. Yeah, I do have it ready. Thank you. Um, all right, guys. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, Finland and the University of Helsinki from a student perspective. Um, I'm going to tell you about what mattered for me when I choose University of Helsinki. So first, my first thing on my list was the quality of education and as you know might know that University of Helsinki is, is among the top hundred universities list in the top hundred university list and the computer science program is a I would consider it a top notch program and Billy and Tina will tell you more about that. Um, second thing that matter for me is the quality of life and how to live as a student here in Helsinki. And for that University of Helsinki has um, uh, uh, has a it's a great city. Actually, city of Helsinki is a great city, and there is a great transportation system. And um, uh, another thing is that matter for me is of course cost of living. Uh, I would say cost here in uh, in Finland or Helsinki is a little bit high, but definitely that's something a student shouldn't worry about because there is large government support for students. For example. Uh, big discounts on 
transportation, meals, housing, even movie tickets and other um, like leisure activities. Uh, other thing, of course, that matter for me is the safety. Uh, uh, I would say Helsinki is one of the safest city cities that I have ever seen. It's pretty normal to to be here, really, like to walk alone late night and not to be afraid or write about anything. And that was really something great. Um, I feel about Helsinki. Um, one other thing also that uh, mattered uh, for me is the city is international country, international city for students. There is about six, six, um, six, uh, six thousand, three hundred, um, uh, six three thousand students here in, at living at the University of Helsinki. Um, so that that really was important for me when I chose uh, University of Helsinki. Uh, and now I will leave Tina talking to you about University of Helsinki more. Thank you. Okay, so this picture shows you that Helsinki City Center University is quite the university main building is quite close to the church, white church in the heart of the city. But our but our faculty sorry but our our faculty is a bit further away. The university is old. It's it's been 375 years we, we had the celebration last year. This is really the largest university and from my perspective and everybody working here, the best university in Finland, we are ranked the highest of any Finnish university and computer science especially has been ranked highest among the Nordic countries. So we are a very good quality place to come and study here. But the Faculty of Science and that covers also the computer science is a bit further from the city center. The city center is on the left hand corner on the, of the picture, but the, as Ahmed mentioned, the local transportation works very nicely. So it only takes you 15, 20 minutes to go, go from city center to, to the faculty, faculty buildings. And the computer science has been there for 10 years approximately now. So we have a relatively new building that suits nicely to our, our purposes and our needs. The department itself is very international. As somebody pointed out, we have more international staff than we have female staff. But then, of course, we have also international female staff there. So there are plenty of students, and we have a nice location in the in the building and lo nice location in the campus. And it's also very nice, just 10, 15 minutes walk from the, the campus to reach the Baltic Sea, for example. So you are, you are also somehow in the city, but also have the nice nature around. And then we are have this master's program, computer science, but we are also, we are also running another computer, other master's program on data science. And we of course have bachelor's program and, and the doctoral program later on for if you are interested in continuing your studies here or somewhere else. And then our teaching is strongly based on research. So our researchers are teaching and most of our teachers are also doing actively research. And later on, we have added these massive online courses to our, our curriculum and our program. And at the moment, we're actually running a course on cybersecurity base, which is an open online course. So if you're interested, you are welcome to locate it in the mock.fi and find and, and start going through that. That's a course that we are offering all, all to all our students also, but it's a bachelor level course, the beginning and the rest is on the master's. But then I think it's my turn to pass the control to Veli to cover more about the research aspect. Okay, thank you, Tina. So <clears throat> about research. So uh, we have uh, these uh, focal areas of research. We have uh, research on algorithms, research on net networking and services, software systems, data science, and bioinformatics. This is roughly the, the clustering of of the topics uh, of the <coughs> research groups in the department. And of these uh, these three first ones, algorithms, networking, and services, and software systems, they, they belong to this uh, computer science master's program. So we have study tracks uh, on uh, exactly on these same names. <coughs> and uh, so, and uh, in, uh, in addition to these areas, there are some novel areas uh, 
raising all the time, uh, security, human computer interaction, computational creativity, big data, Internet of Things, cloud computing. Uh, so, but even these are not covering all because we have something like 30 research groups at the department. And there's a Hels Helsinki Institute for Information Technology. There's an institute joined with the, another university in the area, Aalto University. Uh, and also we are part of uh, three center of excellences. Uh, so these are national centers uh, <coughs> that are very highly competitive uh, uh, research uh, centers. Uh, and these topics that we do their research on is uh, cancer genetics, computational inference, and inverse problems. Uh, here's a snapshot of, uh, of the uh, research domain. So these are the professors uh, currently working at the department. And here you can uh, see see some of the topics, uh, for example, that were in the last slide. And uh, but there are even even more of the topics included there. So these are the people that, uh, if you come to study with us, uh, these uh, professors will will be teaching you in the courses. Uh, <clears throat> so this department is also. Uh, famous of, of this uh, Linux operating system. So uh, Linus Turvalds uh, studied at the, at the department and uh, he was not uh, happy about the very expensive Unix uh, uh, operating system. So he, uh, after taking a couple of uh, courses at our department, decided that uh, it's, it's completely feasible to just write a new operating system. And so he did. And now we are, <clears throat> many of us are running Linux uh, on, on our workstations, but even more, we are running them on our, on our mobile phones. So like a majority of the mobile phones are now running Linux operating system. So this was a big achievement from, <clears throat> that happened at the department. Uh, of course, this is a achievement of Linus Turvalds, but uh, at least he got a good, uh, good kind of education at the department. So we are very proud, proud of, about this uh, achievement. Uh, so <clears throat> back to the uh, current days. So what we have, we do in our teaching and how that uh, relates to research is that that. Uh, here are some examples how research is influencing the teaching. So we have a, this uh, software factory where uh, students work uh, seven weeks uh, 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 and then uh, uh, and they, they kind of completely concentrate uh, on this work on, on this lab and, and this simulates the real working experience if you uh, do software developing development in the company in a company and then these topics that the, the students are working there they also come from uh, our partners from companies so they are sometimes completely real projects that they are doing uh, so you get uh, hands on what, what is the working life after you have uh, got your degree uh, but the the research aspect of this is that we have uh, researchers in software engineering that that uh, observe how these uh, projects are uh, kind of going, and they also also supervise there and try to uh, give uh, the kind of the uh, ideas how to improve this uh, software development process uh, using the current current best practices in software engineering. So this is one one very very nice uh, aspect of uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, <coughs> combining research and uh, uh, teaching and also also connection to the companies. Uh, so and there are other examples. For example, uh, on networking and services, we have a, a great uh, environment uh, where you you can uh, uh, test the protocols. Uh, networking protocols, and uh, maybe here I could uh, ask Tina uh, more details on how, how, what kind of things are happening in this uh, notes laboratory because Tina is uh, from that laboratory. Okay, our notes laboratory covers, as Meli mentioned, all kinds of protocols and networking issues 
we also have a special chamber that covers the communication signals blocking it so that we can run experiments in a really clean environment where there are no environmental electromagnetic radiation available and we can really have all kinds of measurements done there. Then we are running all kinds of, we also have our own research cloud environment where we can do all kinds of issues which you are not able to allow to do in an in a service cloud environment so we can really try things. We have been running ex experiments with all kinds of NAT, NAT devices, these network address translation protocols that's available on most of those ADS or modems, etc. So there are plenty of things we have been doing and we are continuing to do in all kinds of issues. And also the human computer interaction aspect is somehow related to our laboratory, but nowadays they have their own lab. Which is still a very nice environment to go go on and continue this these studies and these issues, and it's really focusing on the interaction between humans and computers. They have all kinds of large touch screens where it can be multiple users doing things, and then they are measuring human motions, etc., using cameras, all kinds of things, and they are always experimenting with the students and people, and once you participate in the experiments, they usually give you some movie tickets as a prize for, for, for doing that experiment for them. But I think we'll continue with Valley explaining other issues. Okay, thank, thank you, Dean. Uh, so we now covered uh, software uh, systems and then uh, networking and services and how, they, uh, how, how the research there is influencing the teaching. Uh, and now uh, the last topic about this research and te teaching aspect, aspect is about the algorithm study track. Uh, so in the algorithms, because this is more abstract, uh, you are, we are working, uh, uh, writing, writing uh, theoretical papers, and uh, when we teach, we teach on the blackboard or whiteboard. Uh, so here, I'm just giving some examples of some unique local content that we have that may not appear in, in other programs. So for example, we, we have a strong emphasis on string algorithms, uh, and actually, so there's one uh, quite famous algorithm by one of our uh, professors, uh, Esko Ukkonen. So he invented uh, this online suffix reconstruction actually while he was teaching uh, this same course, this string algorithms course, uh, already uh, some 1990, I, I think, because uh, he was reading the material uh, about this kind of topics and he couldn't find a nicely explainable algorithm. So he by, uh, while preparing the lecture slides, he realized that that uh, uh, there must be an easier way to do this, and he found it and published it, and this is now a highly cited result. And also, it's used in uh, many textbooks, explain this algorithm. You can find a Wikipedia page about this, and then also other universities teach exactly this algorithm for, for this uh, this. Uh, uh, suffix tree construction. Uh, and other topics like this uh, where there are some original contributions in research uh, in research are approximate pattern matching and then uh, for example uh, one that is uh, quite new is uh, linear time suffix array construction by Juha Kärkkäinen and Juha, Juha is also one of our teachers and is teaching nowadays the string algorithms course. Also, we cover data compression. This is a topic that is covered, of course, in other places. But we have done some original research on uh, Arnold-Stiller transform-based compressed indexes. And we are, of course, happy to teach, teach those topics as well. And uh, their applications in genome analysis. Uh, and maybe you can ask us later, me and uh, maybe Ahmed. Ahmed has uh, been in these courses and knows also this topic. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, so the next topic here is uh, that I, I want to tell you about is uh, how, how this uh, uh, structure of the program looks like. So what, what courses you would be studying here and what choices you have. 
<coughs> so in uh, all together, uh, this is a two-year program, uh, and you gather uh, 120 uh, e ECTS credits of, uh, <coughs> and uh, to graduate with a master's degree. And out of this, uh, there are 80 credits uh, advanced studies in computer science. And there are 40 credits uh, left that you can completely freely uh, choose. Uh, so I tell you more about these 80 credits that are more more fixed. Uh, but even in uh, among those, there are a lot a lot of uh, choices to make. So this is uh, spliced into core study studies of 15 credits, uh, study track specific studies 30 credits, and then we have a a new course called Combat Science Colloquium, uh, five credits, and then the biggest of all is the master's thesis, uh, 30 credits. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll explain you more about this, uh, this, uh, this here. So this is now uh, splicing this uh, core studies and this uh, study track specific studies in the more details. So in core studies, we have a uh, some optional, optionality. Uh, so we offer two courses uh, uh, per study track. So we have three study tracks, so that means that we have six options to choose from, and you should pick three courses to get these 15 credits. Uh, all these courses are offered in the first autumn. Uh, so you can basically just take all the six courses and then decide what study track to follow, or if you already know your field, if you know that you are definitely doing algorithms, you can just pick the two courses specific to algorithms and then one from the other study tracks and so forth. Uh, once you pick your study track, so that means that you have one, one and a half years left in your studies uh, to, uh, uh, to study more specifically one, one kind of topic. Uh, for example, if you choose uh, software systems, uh, there are three models that are offered, software engineering, programming techniques, and data management. So you should then choose one of these and follow the courses that are offered there. There can be even optionality inside these packages, but uh, usually uh, there uh, things are already more settled that you, you know uh, which courses you should take once you fix uh, the model that you want to have. But uh, uh, you can pick two of these models. One will be the kind of the uh, ma uh, kind of your main model, where you are assumed to do your master's thesis on, and the other one is the kind of elective model that uh, you can uh, uh, you can pick also also freely among all of these uh, nine choices here. So we have in the algorithm track we have discrete algorithms. Uh, this one is a big model, so there's a lot of courses where you can pick your favorites. For example, this string algorithm, so data compression will go here. Uh, then there's a model on machine learning, also quite many courses here, so you can pick uh, 15 credits from this. And in the networking and serv services study track, we have a networking uh, model, security model, uh, collaborative and interoperable operable systems model, and then human-computer interaction, of which we already talk, talked about a bit. Uh, in software systems, we have software engineering. Yeah, this I already went through earlier. So from this, uh, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the structure of the program. I'm not going into the course list uh, details. You can find them in our web pages uh, and check even the course content and what they are about if, if you if you want to know know more about these. <coughs> so yeah, so I, I think uh, so there are a few more de details about some new content that we are planning for this pro uh, program. But one new uh, content is this computer science colloquium, and maybe Tina. Uh, can tell tell more about this. Yes, the colloquium is a place to connect all the students from both first and second year to pr listen presentations. Students about to graduate explain their master's thesis, then also to have a look at the PhD studies, have our researchers listen to our present researchers 
present their issues, all kinds of present presentations. We have a lot of visitors and we are planning to have some of those even part of this colloquium as invited talks. So plenty of things planned to have some kind of the connection between the students and teachers more easy and in a bit more course structured in some case so that you can have a feeling of other issues and also a place where you write something to present others issues so that there's also a bit practicing on the academic aspects of writing and presenting things. This is preparation for the for the master's thesis eventually because that is the big 30 credits at the end of the studies about half a year maybe even a bit more in some cases to demonstrate that you have you have really learned the scientific approaches of thinking and methods and can present material in a scientific way and the content of the thesis or the thesis structure can vary up from a student to student depending on whether it's a literature survey or a theoretical research or some kind of experimentation on some issues but those depends on the topic and the student and the supervisor. So the agreement about what the thesis is and which methodology is done is done when you are about to start your thesis. Normally our courses, sorry. Normally our courses cover the, sorry, which way I'm going, wrong way. Normally our courses are, are seven weeks long and there are exercises and there could be study groups, groups but they're, plus an exam or some other way of demonstrating your knowledge of the course. Then we have seminars, which are usually whole, long, whole semester, and they have some courses. And in some cases, there are also specific projects that are somehow related to certain course where you will do some exercise program, project, experimentation, and then some kind of report. So these are the three or four normal ways of doing our studies while you are studying at our department. But then I think it's my time to pass the content to Ahmed to explain next things. Thank you, Tina. Um, so what is the career options for a graduate from computer science department in University of Helsinki? So there are different career options that you can continue as a PhD student. And for that, actually, the one thing about the University of Helsinki computer science department that there are many groups that do research and in for example bioinformatics as the lead land and other domain areas and each year they take some students from master's students as um, summer internship and there's uh, chances to continue that uh, through even your next or second year in studies and then doing your master's studies in one of the research group and even getting your paper published. And that's actually what happened with me. I was working on um, in bio, one bioinformatics groups and I finished my master's and published a paper there. Uh, of course, you can join other universities abroad if you want to uh, do that. And another, another uh, career option is to have your own company and that's surprisingly something very easy here in Finland. It just takes you a few hundred euros and filling a few papers and then you have your own company here established in Finland. And that's actually something great. Other thing is of course to work for some company as a consultant or system developer and that's what I do at the moment. So at the moment I'm working for um, Nokia I'm, uh, as a data scientist and uh, I did my sub program in algorithms and machine learning. And uh, actually, one, one pretty good thing about the, the program is that it, it connects the theory with applications. So, at Nokia, at the moment, I'm working in a project called Nokia Crowd Analytics. And this is related to predicting people movements through time and uh, can be used for uh, retails and transportation and tourism. For example, you want to figure out where are uh, the users based on uh, data coming from a telecommunication network, which is representing the coordinates and uh, and the time. Uh, the data has, of course, a lot of noise, and you should use some uh, machine learning algorithm trying to predict where the user and and where is he moving. For example, the picture on the right is showing something like that. 
the green points represents uh, coordinates coming from telecommunication network. It has a lot of noise. And then the prediction algorithm tries to tell where's the user and how is he moving, where's his home and where's his office. So that's one thing definitely can you can do here after doing your masters. Uh, and now uh, I'll move the presentation to Kalorina. She's going to tell you more about how to apply. Thank you very much, Ahmed. But before we hear from Carolina, uh, I know that uh, we have a video to be played, which I've seen already, and I'm sure that you guys will enjoy. Having seen, we have a few uh, mobile uh, users uh, logged in. I do apologize if this content will not be available to you, but Carolina will then update you and tell you more about the application process. But to the rest, here it is. I hope you guys enjoy. I, for one, immensely enjoyed the video. I hope that the audience has as well. But now it is time to give the floor to Carolina, as said before, uh, who will tell you a bit more about the admissions process. Well, hello again. The video you just saw is quite informative, but just as a reminder, here's some basic, uh, or some basic information, just quite shortly. So, the basic application requirements for all applicants are appropriate bachelor's degree, English language proficiency, and remember to check the country-specific requirements for application documents. Details about these requirements, for example, about proving language skills, can be found on the program's website. The application period for all international master's program at the University of Helsinki starts December 1st and ends January 12th at 3 p.m. Finnish time. And the results uh, will be available in April and the studies begin in autumn 2017. And some words about the tuition fee and scholarship programs. The tuition fee for the Masters of Computer Science is 15,000 euros per academic year. Citizens of non-EU or EEA countries who do not have a permanent resident status in the area are liable to these fees. And we have four categories of scholarships. First, 
deficiency plus living costs. Then the living cost grant, tuition fee, and half of the tuition fee. The application for scholarships will open in December 2016. The, applic uh, the application will be filled out in the same application system and simultaneously with your online application for the master's program. And the results for student place and scholarship will be given at the same time in April. And now I think it's time for Dina to tell you more specific details about applying to computer science. Okay, there are some extra questions on the application form to computer science issues. And the key element of those is the degree content. In computer science field, there are different all kinds of course names that can be used to cover similar issues. And because we don't like the guessing game, you are asked to give course names that you feel are related to any particular topic in the application form. There are 11 categories and you are asked to list the course names and somehow explain the course content on each of those. And then we'll also have a preliminary assignment, which is a separate project or a question paper that you are asked to solve and give us the answers on a specific date. Those dates will be specified once you, you will be sent the assignment in late January. It will be sent to all applicants who have submitted their applications, the online form on time. We don't know at the time, late January at the department, we don't yet know whose paper applications will be accepted. So it will be sent to everybody who has submitted the online application. Which, is the, which doesn't guarantee that you have submitted the papers, but that's, that's how we have to do it so that we can send it to you on late January and have the deadline for everybody sometime in February. But that was more or less the, what I wanted to mention you about the computer science specific issues in the application information. And then Bali will give you something extra information. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Tina. So, Actually, we have covered everything we wanted to say. So the final words are about this, uh, this uh, pages or web links where you can find more information. Uh, I think the most important here is this, uh, <coughs> this uh, second one here, this uh, program pages of the uh, master's program in computer science. Uh, they are actually online already, although here it says that they are online only only in 1st of December, but I, they have been uh, a bit earlier up. So please go there and check all the remaining details you want to know. For example, you can, there's a link to all the courses that we are offering currently, and you can, uh, you can check the content of the courses uh, to, <coughs> uh, there. And then uh, if after this, uh, this uh, presentation, uh, so you can ask uh, questions now after after this, but if you have more questions later, you can just send them to this admins, admissions at helsinki.fi address, and uh, there will be somebody always uh, checking the question and forwarding it to the person that best knows the answer. So this is a good centralized way to to collect all the, all the questions and guarantees that you will you will get the best answer for, for your question. Okay, and after this, I just want to uh, welcome you to apply to our program, and uh, and uh, we will we will be very very happy to see <coughs> see good applicants to this this program as we have had uh, already many years before. So that's all from my part. So thank you. Thank you very much from my end to Veli, to Tina, to Ahmed, as well as to Carolina. And we are now in the Q&A part where our esteemed audience can submit their questions through, <clears throat> I do apologize, through the Q&A panel on the right side. I would like to thank you guys firstly before we go into the Q&A for this uh, in-depth presentation. And let's see if there is something left uh, unanswered. Mm, we have a question from uh, Kadi from Gambia. If you could kindly tell them, him or her, 
what are all of the necessary documents that are needed to be submitted? Perhaps this one is for you, Carolina? Mm, yes. Uh, so you would need to have an official copy of the degree diploma and then official transcript of studies, certificate of language proficiency, and you also need to have these authorized translations into Finnish, Swedish, or English. And then the program wants a motivation motivation letter and a study plan. Thank you very much. I have a question from Zubair, which uh, I honestly don't understand. Zubair, if you would be so kind and uh, further elaborate what you meant. But as we wait for the next question to be submitted, we also have uh, two questions for our today's audience. And I just opened the poll. Should be visible to you guys on the right side. Uh, would you like to get more information on some aspect of the program? And we would also like to know if you are planning to apply to this program. So feel free to give us some feedback. Would be much appreciated. Uh, so thank you very much in advance. But more importantly, you can still submit your questions through the Q&A panel, which you can find on the right side. And perhaps to help our audience, uh, I noticed that there are a lot of international students registered for this webinar. And perhaps a question of my own might help them. I'm guessing this one would be for Veli and for Tina, as well as for uh, Ahmed, actually. If you guys would advise or if it's possible to work while studying. It is allowed to work part-time even during the study periods, but especially for during the summertime and the break times, it is possible to work even full-time. And especially in ICT field, I think Ahmed can confirm, it is very common for students to be able to find some kind of work workplaces. Although some international students who do not have any work experience have found a bit difficulties on finding a suitable way work that would be somehow related to their studies. Uh, yes, that's true, Tina. Uh, in the case of computer science department specifically, it's pretty easy to find a job during um, the summer. As I explained, I was working for the computer science department during the whole summer, and I continued my work for the next year till I finished my studies, actually. Uh, also, there are chances to work on private companies as some are trainee. Uh, there are with also good payments. Um, there are many companies here in, in Finland that require summer trainee and provide summer trainee jobs, um, which is not difficult to get. Thank you very much, Tina and Ahmed. And then we have a question from Nina, firstly saying hello, that she's studying in a Finnish AMK planning to apply for a master's program at your university. Uh, does she need to provide you with a language certificate, such as IELTS or TOEFL, in case she doesn't have the European citizenship? Well, it actually doesn't matter if you have an European citizenship or not, but you need to provide some kind of language certificate for these programs. But. Um, I'm not sure what your case is, so maybe you should contact the admission at helsing.fi and we'll check it because you might have it already with the degree that you're studying now. So I think it's better if you check it right with us by email. Thank you very much, Carolina. Just allow me to check on the progress of the poll. I see that some of you haven't started it yet, uh, but to those of you that have, thank you very much. To those of you that haven't, you can find the poll within the polling panel. It should be beneath Q&A and beneath chat on the right of the panel. Uh, and your feedback would be much appreciated. Just to make sure to the one that is currently in progress, uh, to click on the submit button, should be bottom right hand corner within that window. Otherwise, your effort will be lost. Apologies. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Uh, we have one more. Uh, partaking in the poll, but more importantly, uh, to our attendees joining today, as you can see, today's presenters, Veli, Tina, Carolina, and Ahmed, are at your disposal. Feel free to ask them more about the program, about the student life, about the admissions process. They are here to, to take care of any queries you guys might have. Perhaps a question that I would have if I, would, uh, if I were to come to study uh, in Finland, perhaps this one is, uh, would be for Ahmed, how easy or how difficult it is to get around without having any prior knowledge of the Finnish language? Was that a problem, perhaps? Oh, Would that be? yeah, that's, that's a good question, Simon. Um, actually, surprisingly, it's not a problem here at all because um, most of people here are speaking English. 
and I have been here for more than four and a half years, and I haven't learned the language yet. It's a shame, but in fact, that's uh, yeah. I deal with English only in my whole daily life. Yeah. The issue might actually be vice versa. If you want to study Finnish, it might be very difficult to get the Finns speak to you in Finnish because they are thinking they are polite in answering in English when you speak broken Finnish. That's true as well, yes. Yeah, that is something similar to what I've heard actually is that they uh, resort to speaking English rather than to, to, to speak Finnish, yeah. Which is uh, which could be a pro or a con actually. So for the ones uh, trying to speak Finnish, I would say uh, stick, stick to it, be adamant. Uh, but more importantly, uh, Back to topic uh, in the Q&A. Uh, if there will be no further questions, I'm guessing all of the information was shared, we will be wrapping up the session. But uh, perhaps if some of you are in the process of submitting the question currently, could be through the Q&A or through the chat, uh, I'm seeing that uh, we have an interested uh, attendee in applying. And Carolina, would you kindly remind them about the application deadline? The application deadline is uh, 12th of January, 3 p.m. Thank you very much. Um, let's see, uh, what else could I help today's audience out? Well, let's say I'm an international student. I would like to know uh, how is uh, accommodation dealt with? Does university help them find or should they find it on their own? Perhaps, uh, Ahmed, could you help me out on this uh, one? Yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, actually, the university provides uh, uh, accommodation for students. Uh, if you are plan to apply, then you, you need to apply early enough in order to uh, guarantee a, a place. Uh, for me, the case is that I was living in university accommodation for my whole studies. Perhaps a follow-up question would be uh, sort of the approximate uh, monthly price for the rent would be? Uh, that depends whether you, you want to live in uh, your own place like a studio, for example, or you want to have a shared apartment. For shared apartments, there's, uh, in general, there is the price for the university accommodations is way cheaper than the, the market price. For example, I would say for shared accommodations would be 200 to 250 euros um, per month. For private accommodation, it could be starting from 450 or 400 up to whatever you, you want, of course. Ahmed, thank you very much. Simon, um, one issue related to accommodation is that housing reach and there aren't, isn't enough accommodation, this cheap student accommodation. So once you get an offer, you have to stick with that. Otherwise, you might run out of the cheap options and you need to start hiring from the private sector. That's a very good tip, Tina. Yes, that's true. That is a great tip indeed. And also, don't worry if, if the accommodation seems to be far away from the campus because the public transportation system is so good. Also good news, and we do have a question from Kadi. Uh, to which email should they submit their documents? Well, we you should not email any documents to us. So uh, actually, when you are doing your online application, there will be instructions how to submit the documents, but no emails. Thank you very much, Carolina. And I believe it is then time to wrap up the session as we have no further questions. Allow me to thank our audience members firstly for joining and I'm sure that you guys did get the necessary information uh, for studying at the University of Helsinki. Moreover, uh, I sure hope that some of you are already considering in applying. So thank you very much for attending. And a special thank you to today's presenters, to Veli, to Tina, to Ahmed, as well as to Carolina for taking your time, for sharing your expertise and uh, perhaps any closing comments before we say goodbye? Yes, yeah, so <clears throat> so uh, I hope hope that this was very informative, uh, and so we tried to do our best to explain what our program was about. Uh, but if you didn't find all all the necessary information, the pro program web pages now provide a lot of a lot of uh, kind of more information about the program. Thank you, very thank, much. thank you also from my behalf on following this webinar and really hope hope to see the best ones of you at least in our department next fall. 
Thank you for your Simon and for all attendees and um, best luck for them if you, they are applying to University of Helsinki. And thank you for the admission services too. If you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you once again to all of the participants. And this is Simon signing off by wishing you a good morning, perhaps a good afternoon or a good evening from wherever you may be. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, bye.